Right now, it is time for sports, and it's time for Mike Kazi. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I just thought I'd give you a little classy call to the post this morning because we're going to be talking Travers. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know where that's from, but I thought it was pretty cool the way they uh, the way they did it. Uh, anyway. It sounded like a Breeders' Cup thing or something. Something like that, yeah. Because well, usually they have more than one bugler for that. Yeah, there were, there were, there were four. Yeah, probably what it was then. Uh, well, I have no idea. I just thought it would be kind of cool to use that this morning. Yeah. All right, so let's get into sports here. I don't know. I, don't know. I once again, I had a, a a busy night working last night from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't ever get into doing that, Mike, because when the minute you set up like an office at home, work office at home, it's unbelievable. You can get tied into things, and before you know it, it's ten thirty, and I have to go. You got to make a clock at home. You got to punch yourself out. I know. You really do, because I was up till. I was up till ten thirty. I looked and said, "Man, I'm two and a half hours past my bedtime." Well, anyways, uh, what ha- I know the Yankees didn't play yesterday. They had a day off. No, uh, but- Mets had a good game in the afternoon against the Giants. Um, some bad calls by the umpire swayed the game, and uh, San Francisco won three one. It was a good pitching duel with Bumgarner and Degrom. Um, Degrom had a player struck out. The umpire called it a ball, and you never see Degrom freak out. He freaked out yesterday, especially after the next batter, Bumgartner got a double and knocked in a run. Um, the the umpiring is atrocious at best in Major League Baseball, and yesterday was a big reason. It was a big reason why the Giants beat the Mets yesterday, besides the fact that the Mets can't hit, and uh, going up against Bumgartner didn't help matters. He went eight. I think he gave up four or five hits. And if you look at the box score in yesterday's game, DeGrom gave up four walks. He never gives up four walks. That just tells you that the umpire wasn't good. So uh, both teams wound up with five hits. San Francisco wound up with three runs. The Mets only won, and the Mets lost yesterday to the Giants. Um, Last night, Minnesota beat Oakland 6-4, so that helps extend the Astro lead out west. And Boston whitewashed Cleveland yesterday in an afternoon game, 7-0. So uh, a couple of big games yesterday and a couple of outcomes that were some thought that what you thought would happen and maybe a couple weren't. Now the Yankees play the Sisters of Mercy this weekend. They play the Orioles. The, they're the, um, the bizarro world Red Sox. Um, the Red Sox record, I think, is 90-39. and 39. And Baltimore's 37 and 90. So they're the opposite Red Sox, and the Yankees take them on this weekend in what has to be a, a, a must sweep for the Yankees to, to keep themselves where they are in the uh, in the wild card race. Losses to the to the to the Orioles this weekend is is a uh, is going to be a big blow to them if they have any. All right, uh, so we got all that out of the way. And once again, I know there's people out there that that I, I've gotten uh, some emails to talk about. I just we we just can't talk about football yet, but we just can't. No, we could talk yet. about the uh, the drubbing that the Staten Island Little League got again yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> they got up to a three nothing lead, and the, the Paisans were in the stands. They were they were going nuts. Me and my friend, we went out for dinner last night, and he and I were watching this game and. We stayed for the whole thing. We wouldn't leave the restaurant. And they were winning 3 nothing, and that was it. Um, this Georgia team's a resilient bunch of kids. This is the team that was, uh, they were losing, I think, 6-3 or something to uh, Michigan and earlier in the week and wound up winning that game in extra innings. Um, and they were losing, like I said, 6-3 in the sixth, which is the last inning for Little League. Um, they just didn't, they weren't phased at all by Staten Island and, uh, and they wound up beating them 7-3. And I think, I'm not 100% sure because, like I said, I was in a restaurant and I couldn't hear. I think that the Staten Island coaching staff said, were saving their best pitcher to pitch Saturday. I'm not sure because in Saturday it was the win to get to the finals. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate or not. But in these tournaments, you can't do that. You have to play to win today and worry about tomorrow tomorrow. 
So if that was the case, then the Staten Island coaching staff blew it. But like I said, I don't know because I couldn't hear it. If, if the kid wasn't eligible to pitch, that's another story. But if he was able to pitch last night and he didn't, um, that's, that was a, a boo-boo by Staten Island. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if they need four days rest, five days rest. I don't know the Little League rules. But um, if, if that kid was eligible to pitch and they were just saving him, that was a mistake. But like I said, I don't know. All right. So now, how would you do yesterday at Saratoga? Horse didn't run. Um, hmm. Caramouche didn't get the horse out of the gate. Um, the horse that got in front won, which I, I knew whoever got in front won, and Caramouche was a speed rider. Um, but the horse never got in front, and then in a the stretch he dropped down to the rail. Um, you drop down to the rail at Saratoga, um, you might as well just pull your horse up because that's like running in quicksand. So if you play Saratoga and you see a horse go down to the rail on the dirt, you can just throw your tickets away because you have no shot at that point. And that's what happened to our play yesterday. All right, now you've got a big, a big weekend to pick for Saratoga. Yeah, I got some picks for us. We'll, <laughs> don't, don't sound so excited. <laughs> oh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you, you, you might think you have everything all lined up, and uh, it just doesn't work that way. So you have to be humble. Hopefully, we're right this time. Um, we'll go to tomorrow's race starting in the seventh. Um, one of the stakes races on the card, there's a bunch of them. The grade one personal lens in a mile and an eighth on the dirt. Six horses line up here. Um, this is a rematch of last year's race at Saratoga, the Coaching Club Oaks, uh, where, no, not, not the Coaching Club Oaks. Yeah, the Coaching Club Oaks, where Abel Tasman and the late hooked up, and the late was coming up the rail going to, to go by Abel Tasman, and Mike Smith um, hardballed the horse, wouldn't let him up. Um, put up the inquiry, everything looked at it, and they said, no, we're not taking him down, which was a big travesty uh, by the stewards at Saratoga last year because Smith should have got disqualified. Um, this year, Abel Tasman gets the rail, and the lake got the six hole. Um, the lake turns the tables on Abel Tasman this year and takes her to the woodshed, um, making one horse play in here because there's only six horses and it looks like a two-horse race. Um, Elate will win the personal ensign tomorrow. And if you want to look at a horse that might make an exacta for you and you want to throw Abel Tasman out like I am, um, use the five horse, Farrell. This horse has some speed. He's going to go to the front as far as they can go. Um, held on to win the shoe V at a mile and an eighth this year, this year earlier up at Saratoga. Um, set to pace and wound up winning by a neck. But I, I think Elate just stands head and, heads and heels over this field and gets the job done in the personal ensign. I'm um, swinging a couple races down to the ninth race is the grade one forego, seven furlongs on the dirt. Um, a nice race here. Um, you can go a lot of ways. If, if you have an angle you like, go with it. Now, my angle here is Libazine Liberal is, is a m much different horse at seven furlongs than it is at six. Um, this horse likes to win at seven furlongs. Is coming off a seven furlong win in the Belmont Sprint um, Fourth of July week up at Belmont. And, uh, the horse went off of just under two to one that day. Um, it's going to sit the rail, get a good trip. I'm sure Ortiz is going to save ground on the rail in the back stretch and then put himself in a position to flip outside and, and start the run. Um, Limousine Liberal is going to be a must use. And like I said, um, horses are going to get bet. And there's one horse I think is going to get bet is the three horse Whitmore. Because if you look at the record of of 10 wins and 21 starts and hitting the board seven other times, you're going to say, oh, this is going to be, this is good, this is good. This is a six furlong horse, and seven furlongs is just going to help. No, no, uh, uh, opposite. This horse is bad at seven furlongs. This horse is a six furlong specialist, and the extra furlong can't get it done, even though this horse has a, a, a sweeping move that it can't extend this horse to seven furlongs. So ditch Whitmore. Um, another horse that might bear some watching is the 6CZ Rocket Train by Al Stahl. Um, this horse is running some lesser races and is very, very competitive. Um, jumps into the deep water tomorrow. Um, this horse could give a good account of himself, too. Uh, but my two top picks in here, one is going to be the one Libazine Liberal. My other one's going to be the five, No Dozing. Um, no Dozing I had um, open in weekend at Saratoga and went off a nice 6-1. to one against some big horses, some of them running back in this race, and just sat and made a nice move with Rosario up, 
and won pretty convincingly. Um, this horse is good at seven furlongs, um, coming off some nice works. Uh, work August 13th shows that this horse is still in shape, and uh, I'm going to go with the price here. This horse is 12 to 1, which is a ridiculous morning line, and I'm going to take the 12 to 1 and run to the bank in this race. Um, no dozing is going to be my top play. I'm, I'm going to put Limousine Liberal in an exacta and maybe in a little smaller exacta with CZ Rocket. So that's the ninth race at Saratoga tomorrow. Uh, the tenth race is the grade one sword hunter, sword dancer, mile and a half on the turf, uh, three turns on a mile and a half at Saratoga, unlike Belmont. So you have to make sure you've got horses that have been running three turn races. Uh, two horses I'm looking at in here. One is the four, High Happy, who appears to be the speed of the race, and uh, speed on the inner turf up there is very, very dangerous. This horse gets along on, her, on his own, could get very brave on the front end and, and just go wire to wire here. Um, another horse I'm looking at is down on the rail, the one horse, Glorious Empire. Um, this horse won the Bowling Green at Saratoga on a soft track on the front end, too. Um, so this is another horse you have to watch out. Actually, he didn't win the, the Bowling Green, was dead heat in first, so it still counts as a win for this horse. So High Happy and Glorious Empire look to be the speed in the race. Um, my pick in here is going to be the two-horse, um, Spring Quality. This horse was scratched from the Arlington Million, had a little bit of a physical issue that day, um, comes right back two weeks later to run in the Sword Dancer. Um, this horse runs very, very well at three turns. And I think this horse gets the job done for Graham Motion and Edgar Prado at 4-1. to one. So my top pick in the sword dance is the two, Spring Quality, and I'm going to use the one, Glorious Empire, and the four, High Happy, underneath. Brings us to the Travers. Um, I wish Minomoy's girl was in this race, but I think they're looking to fry a bit deeper fish in November. Um, a little bit about Minomoy's girl. The future book odds came out yesterday for the Breeders' Cup. And Manomoy's girl in the Breeders' Cup female classic is 7-2. to two. She's cross-entered into the Breeders' Cup men's, the boys' classic for Colts and Geldings as well. It's an open race, 30-1. to one. Um, I'm going to make a little future bet on Manomoy's girl to win the classic at 30-1 to because I think she's the best horse in training right now. But that's for another day at another time. Back to the Travis tomorrow. Field of 11 getting here. you got one Philly, one to Godot. Um, this horse can run the distance, unlike Midnight Bisu, um, but I just think she's in very deep water tomorrow. Um, if you want to take a shot with her, I couldn't blame you, but I, I don't like the horse. Um, another horse I don't like is Mendelssohn. Um, I'm throwing that horse right out. Um, a couple other horses I'm going to throw out. Vino Rosso, um, throwing that horse out. Good Magic, the winner of the, of the Haskell. Um, I don't think this horse even hits the board. A little bit about the history of Haskell winners going into the Travers. The last Haskell winner to win a Travers was 17 years ago, was point given, um, which just solidifies my, uh, my constant claim as to Haskell being a meaningless race. Um, these horses just go, don't go on to do a heck of a lot, except for American Pharaoh, which won last year, uh, two, three years ago. So the last Haskell winner to win a Travers 17 years ago. Um, my two horses I like in this race, uh, one is the 10 horse, tenfold. Has some, a bit of early speed to position himself early. Has run in some big races this year. Wasn't embarrassed. Running against Justify uh, in the Preakness in the Slop. The horse ran third, beat by less than a length. And in the Belmont ran fifth, beat by seven. Um, Justify was obviously the best horse in training this year. And wasn't really... Um, embarrassed running against it. Everybody's going to be jumping on Kronkowski tomorrow. It's yet to be seen how good this horse is. Only ran one race in the States, and I'm going to take a pass on him tomorrow. So tenfold's going to be one horse I'm going to use. The other horse I'm going to use, and I'm going to use on top, is going to be the 11, Catholic Boy. A uh, horse runs very, very well on turf, is just as good on dirt, um, won the Remsen, ran very good in the Sam Davis at Tampa, then decided to go to the Florida Derby to run, ran fourth, got beat by 12, ran fourth out of nine horses, and bled badly that day through the Lasix. Um, since then, they've, they've taken their time getting this horse back. Two races uh, that run at Belmont on the turf ran real big. Um, this horse is working out very good on the dirt, taking the 8-1 to one with Catholic Boy, and I think this horse wins up there. If you remember last year, a turf horse won the Jim Dandy, and everybody was scratching their head when it paid 40 bucks. 
I think that Catholic boy is just better than the rest of these and wins the Travers tomorrow. So my top pick in the race is going to be the 11 Catholic boy. I'm going to use the 10 horse tenfold underneath, and if I throw another horse in there for going underneath, I'm going to use the 4 Bravazzo. So 11, 10, 4 in that order is my pick in the Travers tomorrow. And